lab guy here. This should be a short video. Let's cross our fingers. This is the follow-up talking about monostable multivibrators or one-shots and as I like to call them timers, electronic circuits that trigger on a pulse, stay turned on for a length of time and then turn off. Today's discussion will be how to look at any one-shot. If you have a schematic and you see that there's a one-shot in it, and you have a two-trace or more oscilloscope, you'll be able to connect your oscilloscope to the input of that one-shot and to the output of the one-shot to see what triggers it and to measure how long it triggers. I've drawn a schematic that shows a 555 timer producing essentially a horizontal drive pulse as used in an analog television camera and it is attached to a single stage of a dual one-shot. We're only looking at one of the two one-shots. The principle I will discuss today applies to any, whether it's the first or the second one or the fourteenth one in the seventh package down. This is how you measure them. So let's look at my schematic. If you'll note, there are two devices. The one on the left, IC1, is the 555 timer IC configured as an A-stable multivibrator. I duplicated the resistor and capacitor stack on the left side to match the timer on Troy Walter's camera circuit. Look at the bottom at pin 4. You'll note that I simply tied pin 4 high. We're running this entire circuit on 5 volts instead of 15. Operation is identical to Troy's camera except the timing components on the one shot will be different because I'm using a different type of one shot. But in principle they operate in exactly the same way. So looking at the timing resistors and capacitor on the left side of the 555 at the top we have VR1 variable resistor 1 a 1k resistor this is the free running frequency set pot below that is the 5.1k resistor on Troy schematic it was a 5.6k resistor R1 on my schematic I used a 5.6k I was not able to turn the frequency down uh, low enough to uh, get to 15,625 cycles, which is uh, CCIR slash PAL uh, horizontal scan rate. So I changed that resistor to 5.1K in my case. Also, all of my resistors are 1% tolerance resistors. Looking at R2, R2 sets the low time period of the output pulse and on Troy schematic it was called out as 1.8K and on, on my uh, schematic I used the closest 1% value which is 1.74K. This resulted in an output pulse with a low time period of 12.8 microseconds which is 0.8 microseconds too wide to be a blanking pulse in the PAL standard. But we aren't worried about that right now. Alright, the 0.01 microfarad capacitor is pretty common for the kilohertz frequency range when using a 555 timer. You'll note on the right side of the 555 timer on pin 5 I have placed a 0.01 microfarad capacitor to ground. This pin on, five, on the, all 555s is the frequency control pin. They call it control voltage. If you vary the voltage on this pin, you can change the output frequency. Now, leaving the pin float, it acts like an antenna. And it could pick up noise, which could modulate your output pulse. So... It is common practice to bypass pin 5 on a 555 timer to ground with a 0.01 or a 0.1 microfarad capacitor just to keep 
noise off of the pin. Moving on, we have our output pin, which I've labeled CLK, which stands for clock. If you look at the bottom of the diagram, you see a, tr a timing trace labeled A. That is the clock output of the 555 timer. It is low for 12.8 microseconds and has a complete period from falling edge to falling edge of 63 and a half microseconds, give or take a few nanoseconds. But it is a frequency of 15,625 cycles per second the European standard definition television scan rate, horizontal scan rate. All right, moving on to the next block on the diagram is a single stage of a 74HC221 A stable multi vibrator. It is essentially identical to the one on Troy schematic, except that it's a different part number. There are two input pins, pin 1 labeled A inside the block and pin 2 labeled B inside the block. Those are on the left side of the, of the block. Note that at the A I show a, a figure that looks like a 1 but it, is, it represents a falling edge. Also the A pin has a bubble. A bubble means that pin is active with a low and the falling edge says that this timer will trigger when the pulse on that pin goes low. If I wanted it to trigger on the pulse going high I would have driven it in to the B input which its pulse symbol says that it triggers on a high and I would have then grounded pin 1. I would have made pin 1 low. They operate as an OR. One of them uh, you, can either, you can use A or you can use B. Okay, we won't go further than that. So pin 2 is pulled high to enable the inputs. If it was the other way, pin 1 needs to be pulled low to enable the inputs. So we're driving pin 1 so that we trigger on a falling edge. Alright, that takes care of the input triggering. I want to I talk about the power line. Uh, the power for the chip comes into pin 16 and ground for the chip is pin 8 as you see on the top and bottom left side. On the bottom of the chip pin 3 is the reset pin. You can override the inputs with a low signal on this pin and force the Q output low. And whatever the Q output is, the Q not output is the opposite. So reset is Q low, Q not high. Okay, we've disabled that pin by pulling it high with a 1K resistor. We're not using reset on this part. So, now on the top you see that C3, a 0 0.01 microfarad capacitor, R4, a 1K resistor, and VR2, variable resistor 2, a 10K resistor. VR2 sets the time period of this one shot and the time period runs from 8.4 microseconds to greater than our 63 and a half microseconds. I didn't even bother to measure how far out it goes uh, at full time interval. It doesn't matter in this case. The 1K resistor R4 is particular to 74HC221s. You must have a minimum resistance on pin 15 of 1K. If you go below that, and in fact I've left that resistor out before, if you turn the 10K pot so that it is shorted out where it's all the way to the 5 volt end, the 74HC221 will let all of the smoke out of the inside. It will explode. It will blow up. So uh, when using two, the HC family of 221s, you must have that 1K resistor. Be that as it may, all right, that is our test circuit. Now, looking at the traces again on the bottom of the diagram, trace B is the Q output, all right? And that's the one we will look at on the scope. So, 
Uh, looking at the diagram, you see the dotted line in the center with the arrow pointing in two directions that says 8.4 microseconds one way and greater than 63.5 microseconds to the right. And that represents the adjustable range of VR2. Now let's look at that on the oscilloscope. Here's the test circuit constructed on a breadboard. The 555 is here. The dual one shot is here. VR1, the frequency adjustment, is here. And VR2, the one shot time period pot, is located here. Looking at the scope, we can see on the upper trace the output waveform of the 555 timer. I have already adjusted VR1 to set that to the same time period of Troy's Iconoscope Camera 555 circuit. It turns out that the low going pulse is 12.8 microseconds wide with a period of 63 and a half microseconds which is the horizontal scan period of PAL video at 15,625 cycles per second, the standard European television scanning format for horizontal scan. The bottom trace is the Q output of my 74HC221 one shot. That is the Q output. If I adjust VR2, you can see the edge, the falling edge of Q move. And we can set it to a minimum pulse width of less than the 12 microseconds and to a maximum pulse width greater than the horizontal scan period and I'll demonstrate it, though we wouldn't operate it this way, but it goes beyond the trigger period and then it uh, begins to divide by two. So we don't want to do that. So we bring it back and I've set this demo pulse at a period of 27 microseconds after it's been triggered for this demonstration and that is measured with the cursors the dotted line here and the solid line are the marker cursors and they're indicated up here as 27.2 microseconds between them and so that is essentially how the one shot looks on an oscilloscope so what we're looking at on the upper trace is the output of the 555 timer and the falling edge input, input A, on the 74HC221. So when this edge falls, it triggers the 221, which turns on and stays turned on for the period determined by the 0 0.01 microfarad capacitor and the 10K variable resistor. When the time period has been reached, the output turns off until the next triggering edge, and this repeats indefinitely. By changing the resistor or capacitor value of the timer on the one shot, we can set any width that we like. All right, then, this should have given you enough information to be able to either build this breadboard or if you have a, a circuit that has a one shot that has mystified you you can hook your oscilloscope to it and look at the trigger inputs and look at the Q or Q naught output whichever they use and be able to measure the time period of the output without having to do calculations for the upper resistor or the uh, upper capacitor so until next time, Lab Guy out.